Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to hop on and share this new little table here off to my side. And this is a new addition where I've displayed my stamps over here. I have some pens in my Superior Labor pouch and I also have all of, well, majority of my PET tapes on that tall long one, my fountain pens here, and then some stickers and sticker books. And then of course my washi dispenser from Galen Leather. So this is right next to me in my office space. And before it had nothing um, in this area except for some things on the floor. And now that I have this space, it allows me to have easy access to um, all the things I need, especially my stamps. Oh, and I have my Galen Leather Undyed um, Writer's Medic Bag. I think that's what it's called down there. But anyway, I am going to try to merge a couple of videos. I do have two unboxings I'm going to add to this video. And then in another video, I'm going to do my fountain pen, um, what's currently inked. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and then stay tuned for the next video, which would hopefully be up very soon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and the Olives. Yes, I have a quick unboxing with you because I'm obsessed with their stamps. Their stamps are so good. So this is from Emma Stationery Hall, which is the name of the company, and I will be linking them in the description box below. So it always comes very well packaged. And a bunch of goodies, extras that she sends. And literally, I just got a whole bunch of stamps. Let's open this one first. So I got this individual stamp and I love the clear stamp because the images are so crisp and clear. And then I got the camera stamp, which is perfect. And I also got a little um, sampler of one of the PET tapes. And I wasn't sure about the size of the images. So these are actually pretty big in comparison. They're almost as big as like a Sashi Hata stamp. So I got that. And some cute girls. And this is one full roll of different images. And that one was called New Journal Pages Windry Trinkets PET Tape. And as of right now, she still has some available um, as a whole roll. So next, wow, these are packaged. And this is actually from a larger pack of, I think, um, eight. So I just got the three set and they look like this. Really pretty simple images, but I know these will come out really crisp. And again, I've been on the search for smaller stamps, although I do like having a couple of larger stamps. And then this one, look at that, so cute. Cute hugs and flowers, it says. Oh, this is wrapped in like a cloth. How nice. 
So this is from Black Milk Project, and I guess I will try to find a uh, way to use this material. And it came with a piece of paper. Not really sure. I guess I could journal with it. And then this is the stamp. Really pretty. So we'll see how that one stamps. And last but not least is I think this is the Sis Volume 7. Hmm, it's hard to read because everything is in a different direction. So there's something going down this way, something going across this way, and then even something going across this way. But it is wrapped really nice. And let's see, so we have, oh yeah, this one. Then this one it says mem uh, memorable collage moments. Flower. This one's a little bit bigger. And this one says Reminder, a bigger flower, and I think there's words. Greatness isn't born, but grown, I think it says. So that one's a pretty big one. Not impossible, it's possible and perfectly imperfect. I really like that one. I think that's the one that caught my eye for this set. Last but not least, it's one that says collect beautiful moments. So it's a really big stamp, but um, I really like the message. We write to taste life twice. So you can see how big it is. <laughs> but these are all the stamps I got, pretty crazy. Um, let me show you how they stamp on Tamoy River because I did get a question about how it would stamp on the Tomoe River with Sashihara ink pads. So we will do just a quick test. Let's do... See this big one. And this is my new stamp pad in the it's a really dusty light purple. I'm probably putting way too much ink on here. But it's not too bright in my opinion. That looks like perfect. <laughs> and then you could see some ghosting, but overall it doesn't bleed through the ink. So let me show you in my Hobonichi. So here's one of my Hobonichis. I don't have my large one close by me right now. So I figured let's just do my weeks. Okay. So let's do something off to the side. And we will make it again with this dusty purple. Oh, 
I will put it here in the corner. Wow, that looks great. Very detailed. You can even see the little lines in the flower or the leaf there. And you can even see the letters of the message. And no real bleed through, just some ghosting. So let me do it in a different color. Let's try this blue. And we can use this one that says memorable. And put my writing board in the back. Stand that in the top. So it seems like the drying time does mimic that of fountain pen ink, so you do want to give it some time to dry. But if you're on a dory paper or um, some other paper outside of Tomoe River, I'm pretty sure that they dry pretty quickly. Like my Tomoe, my um, Traveler's Company inserts dry really quick. But there's that one. And see, it's a little bit of ghosting, but not really much bleed through. So they work on a lot of papers and I really like them. I like the colors. There you have so many different colors, and most of the colors are pretty muted. They're not super dark, and so you can even layer with them as well. Anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you today. And if you have any questions um, about the stamps or stamping in on paper, um, let me know. And if you're interested in her shop, make sure you check her out. I am not sponsored in any way by this shop or anyone, really. Um, so all these I've purchased myself and I have my own opinions about them. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Hey everyone, this might be a bit of a, uh, a controversial video. But I wanted to share with you um, the unboxing of my most expensive pen yet. And I'm really nervous because I've heard a lot of people say that it's not really worth it. But I honestly cannot make that determination from just viewing um, what other people um, review online um, without holding it in my hands and testing testing it out for myself. So I've decided to get this pen. As you can see, I haven't even quite finished opening the box. So I'm going to do that now. So this pen is from Endless Pen. I also ended up getting a ink, which would be my uh, very first Mont Blanc ink. And my very first Mont Blanc. Oh gosh, this makes me really nervous. So it comes in a hardened clamshell box. And you can see like the white on it. And then you get the service guide, which I do plan to read just to make sure I am taking care of this pen.
And then nestled inside is my medium Mont Blanc uh, number 145. And I don't think there's anything else in here. Okay, so when I'm looking at the pen itself, it's actually not as like small as I assumed it would be from a lot of reviews. And trust me, I've been doing a lot of reviews, um, watching the reviews for this pen. Okay, so the pen is quite thin but I know I have a lot of other fountain pens that are this size, so this actually isn't really that uncomfortable to me just by holding it. It is a lot more lightweight, like it's not, it's not very heavy or hefty. And let's pull out some of my Franklin Kristoff just to give you an idea. So it is roughly the same size as the model 25 and probably maybe the same girth because this is a pretty slender pen. Okay, so let's open it up. And I think it's a number five size nib. Very pretty nib. I also got it in the medium, as you can tell by the sticker. I don't know, do I keep the sticker on or do I take it off? And is it a... It is a cartridge converter pen. Yeah, so I'm surprised that that's in there. I'm not really sure why. If that's just to keep the ink agitated so it doesn't get stunk or stuck. And it's a twist um, converter. So let's take a look at my ink because that ink is what I want to fill this pen with. So I wanted to get a Mont Blanc ink um, just because I don't have one and also because it was on sale and Mont Blanc suggests to use their ink. So since this is my first Mont Blanc, I might just comply a little bit more than what I would with some others. So let's see how this bottle looks. I'm just trying to pull it out. Homer, let's go. Okay. So this one is called Homer Greek Blue. And the bottles are so classy and pretty. And there is a bit of an odor, which is kind of weird. Maybe it's, I don't know. But here's some paper, probably on the ink that I need to read. And um, the bottle sits nestled in there. This is definitely going to be a bottle I will most likely keep in the box until I can't anymore. Um, so yeah, let's ink this up. Okay, so... I didn't get to really talk much about the pen itself. So when we're looking at the pen, there are there's a finial, finial with 
the logo of a star and then also curved at the bottom but all black then you have the pen clip which I suppose is pretty strong and easy to clip on and you have three bands and it says Mont Blanc Meisterstück and this material feels really soft and smooth and what I'm supposed to do is shine some light uh, through the barrel and I should get like a red tone to know that it's like a real Mont Blanc. I mean, I am buying it from a from a reputable seller and I do see the serial number at the top band right up here, which kind of see the letters there. So let's see how it writes. Actually really smooth. And this is on Tamoy River paper. And the blue ink is just your typical blue. Nothing too special, but um, like the average blue color, I suppose. It's not scratchy. There's a little bit of feedback. So it's not super glassy to me. It's not a heavy pen. And I think, I mean, the medium writes just fine for me. And actually I find it really comfortable. The threads are not uh, too obtrusive for my fingers. But I can feel them. They're not overly, um, like, hidden. But it's actually quite comfortable for me. I'm not quite sure if I was expecting. I think I was kind of expecting, like, unicorn blood or something. That this thing was some magical wand. Um, but I'm sure I need more time with it. It's keeping up and it's comfortable to write with. The nib just looks so tiny to me, but it is a really pretty nib. It says 4810 and I don't see where it says. So they don't put the nib size on the nib at all which is probably why they have medium here. I guess there's a little bit of flexibility, but I do like how I can write closer to the paper and also uh, more vertical. So yeah, we'll see how this, how I like this pen in a couple weeks. And if it's, and if I think it's worth the money. 
Let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, I bought this from Endless Pens. This isn't sponsored. I did buy it with my own money. And um, so far, I am pleased with what I got. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, post them down below, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.